Our next guest is Rakesh from Live Pure. Rakesh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jasper. Now, here, when let, let, let's get into the heart of the matter. When you think about market expansion, of course, it's not just a marketing topic, is it? It's a big business topic. Absolutely. And talk to us a bit about, because Live Pure or the many other brands you've worked with may have this or that identity, th this or that brand ingredients. But you have, interest, you have a very interesting thought process around business models and how innate that is to expansion. Talk to us a bit about that, Rakesh. Yes, Jasper, you're right. I mean, as far as the uh, expansion, the market expansion is concerned, it doesn't necessarily cover the, uh, the brand. It covers the newer consumer cohorts. It addresses, if any, uh, unmet needs of the consumers. And that's how you can do market expansion through various uh, you know, areas as such. So we at Liverpool have been an 11-year-old brand and been primarily into water purification. We know water is a big, big uh, issue in India. The availability of the water. I'm, I must give you some details, which will actually be, you know, eye openers. Say, India constitutes of 17 percent of world's population, but has just 3 percent of world's water resources. And even out of that 3 percent water resources, 92 percent is not portable. So here is India is actually facing a scarcity of water, and you also hear about cities. Uh, going without water for days together and there's no groundwater table as of now. So we actually are understood this need and we felt that the water purifiers as a product, the penetration in the market is not, is hovering around 3 to 5 percent as such. And uh, here we found that how do we expand the market? How do we democratize drinking of purified water across millions of Indians which they don't have access? And we went deeper and did a lot of consumer insightings as such and we we saw that typically a water purifier could cost you between 12,000 to 18,000 Indian rupees. And after every one year, you got to pay four to 6,000 rupees in order to maintain that water purifiers because the filters go bad, depending on the quality of the water, depending on where you stay, because India, again, has got various quality of water across, the, across states. So we thought, you know, the consumer had a big problem. While well, they bought a product, and after every one year, they're going to pay one third of the product cost back into the annual maintenance contract. And they have all the pains of, you know, calling the technician, he coming there, you know, addressing the problem, changing the filters. So while companies made revenues out of it, you know, based on the service needs of the consumers of the water purifiers, we felt there was an unmet need. We felt that the consumers needed, uh, we needed to expand the cohort. We needed to democratize water purification as such. So we thought of, and we did a lot of consumer insights, and we felt these are the pain points which needs to be addressed. And we came up with a unique, uh, what we call the subscription model. And uh, you know, uh, today, uh, we actually built a very, very strong tech stack around it, invested millions into building a very, very consumer-friendly tech stack, whereby which consumer does not have to own a machine. He does not have to own a machine. All he has to do is to have a subscription, which can range from three to 12 months and even more. And all he needs to is, you know, we, we address these consumers through digital marketing and other avenues of marketing where we reach out to these consumers. And, uh, you know, we go and, you know, install the water purifier at his place. And so absolutely, he does not have to worry about anything. He or she doesn't have to worry about anything. These are IoT machines. Whenever the filter goes bad, we get a prompt on our server. The engineer calls up, does an outbound calling, calls the consumer. That, okay, can I come and you know get your filter changed? He says, okay, please come in, and we get the filters changed. So for three years and years and years on, he doesn't have to worry about any uh, acquisition cost. He doesn't have to worry about any maintenance contract as such. So it's zero for maintenance, zero cost. And hence, and also at the same time, the consumer is based out of, say, for example, in Bangalore, and he needs to shift to Gurgaon. We actually do the shifting of the product for him as well, or we can we can have a new water purifier installed at his home in Gurgaon. Okay, this is this is very interesting because because you know on the face of it you might say that um, yeah, given this is a, a marketing forum, that uh, differentiating Live Pure was about my water is better than your water, but actually you're on something very interesting here, which is that's probably a hard message to get across. But t but tell me this, Rakesh. So. You figure out the kind of secret that you're a sort of water solutions business. What, was there something in there about reflecting on what kind of a business you are, right? Because you're sort of a water business, but you're also a sort of tech solutions business. Was that, was that fundamental to working out your expansion plan? Not really, because at the core of our business thought was that how do we address the needs of the consumers? How do we make the lives of our consumers easier? 
while we were still in the larger water business. So I'll give an example, you know, related to the market expansion. So while we have acquired more than a gross acquisition of more than 300,000 consumers, and we believe that in the next two years, if you reach one million consumers, the current size of water purifiers the product itself is three million. So we're actually expanding the cohort, we're expanding the consumer base as such, and you need tech solutions because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a business where we don't really want to engage the consumers in conversations time and again. It's all, he has an app on his phone, we can really diagnose the quality of the water at his home as well. So to that extent, tech was important to build and scale up the business. Okay, but let's, let's stay on this sort of, let's stay on this rail track. So live pure is a, is a very big kind of a term. Is, is that because from a, from a growth and expansion perspective, Rakesh, you aspire to be more than water? Is there something deliberate in this? Yes, of course. I mean, the core, at the core of our business philosophy is you know, we are into uh, health and wellness. You know, wellness is a much bigger word than being healthy. It, it, it talks about comfort, it talks about being more productivity, more productive, being more productive. So when we talk about health and wellness, what we say is that Leopure aspires to be a player of significance in kitchen space, which includes water purifiers, by the way, and other kitchen appliances. And we want to be a player of significance in the overall home space. So which gives us a positioning, whether it's in the tech space, in the IoT space, and the, eventually the whole idea is, you know, 50 to 60% of our revenues is coming from the digital channels. So to that extent, you know, while we are in the, while our anchor business still remains water, we have, you know, revolutionized the concept of bringing technology into this category so as to, again, you know, to see that the engagement within the consumer is seamless and uh, he's, he's a happy consumer at the end of the day. And are you just, just staying on this sort of fundamental thing around what enables your market expansion? I mean, you've been in Philips, Whirlpool, you know, ton, ton, tons of businesses. Is there something about Live Pure that's uh, it's almost like a new type of business? Because before we had white goods, right? Or we had a service contract. Is part of your thinking around expansion that actually you're kind of a new category of, of brand and business, right? I think the world has changed quite a bit, particularly India also post-COVID. I think the uh, the holiness around the brands and the category extensions which used to be a, a big debate earlier is no longer the debate now the new age consumer the general uh, the the millennials are looking at the deliveries they're looking at how how brilliant the brand is teaching you or how brand is treating you at the end of the at the at the delivery time the post sales experience so i think towards that i think the brands are no longer halos it's about experience what you give them so from that perspective, through our insi consumer insights and a lot of engagement with our consumers, we believe that this changing world requires a very dynamic solution to the consumer problems which we are addressing through this business uh, solution. Okay, and if we define Rakesh, the market is India. You offer a solution, as you described, very well thought through from soup to nuts or, or soup to water or water to nuts, whichever one it is. How different are the customer behaviors in terms of engaging with your brand from Kashmir to Kerala, Bombay to Bengal? I mean, of course, I mean, uh, as rightly pointed out, we have several Indias within India as such. And from a water purifier perspective, yeah. is it all kind of, you know, Kerala guy is the same as Kashmir guy when it comes to a water purifier? Is it quite, quite a kind of utility in so that I sense? Think, uh, you know, as far as addressing the needs of the consumer is concerned, the water quality is different in different states as such. You know, we call the totally dissolved solvents, which is, uh, you know, called TDS in the common parlance, is different in different states. So we actually don't give one solution which fits all, basically. We do a customized solution to the customer in terms of what is the right kind of a water purifier which he requires for his, his, his or her home. So if the, your TDS is low, you could just have a UE water purifier. If you could have, you know, if you have, uh, you know, um, uh, higher TDS, you could do with a, a reverse osmosis yeah. technology. So we do our customize our solutions and customize our marketing to the various yeah. cohorts of the consumers. When I go home, I'm going to check which one I've got. But I'm going to chuck this over to Amit, right? So, Amit, you're, you're interesting because because you very kindly gave me a, a, a heart-shaped or a flower-shaped bar of soap, right? So you're kind of in this water game as well. You must be, yes, right? Very in your 23 years building Soul Flower. How much have you, I'm trying to connect these two brands, how much has water been part of your customer experience? Water is very important. So for us, the way he's selling water for the intake, water is so critical. So India is the highest boiling country. And the one reason is water in India. So if he has a technology tomorrow to convert that high tedious water for people having bath 
to a lower TDS water or a better quality water, India might have lesser skin issues, lesser hair fall issues. Because I mean, we'll, I mean, we'll come and talk about we'll come and talk about soul flower in a second. But water is interesting in that sense, is it connects to all sorts of stuff. Yeah, sure. Right. I think this is this is the first example of a trailblazer brokered brand collab. Thanks for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back on to you, Rakesh. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Amit. So uh, we're in the home straight here. As a man who's been at the helm of a bunch of brands, can, do you have a sense of why one brand or agency or media agency is better at market expansion than another? Is it a kind of ethos thing? Is it a technical thing? I think, you know, if, if, you, if you go for the pre-COVID times, you know, distribution was a big leverage in India. You know, today you talked about India is having around 17,000 pin codes across the country. And earlier distribution used to be the holy grail of brands. You know, brands who've been invested in distribution marketing for several years used to be the brands where no other could get entry into. But post-COVID and even before COVID, the digital economy took over that. And today you can address your 17,000 pin codes through e-commerce as well. Because e-commerce has become a substantial part of your business to the level of even 30 to 35 percent. So, so distribution is no longer the weapon which you used to have in the earlier time. So it's smart marketing, it's focused marketing, it's reaching out to the consumer through this digital landscape and giving your entire profile of your products which you have to a consumer cohort at a much faster pace and of course at an optimized cost too. Well, and you know, we, 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 we need a whole other show to do this, but you're onto something very interesting in the sense that Alexander the Great did what he did yep. because there weren't micro Alexander the Greats everywhere he went. Now, True. it's not enough to be Tata, Reliance, Godredge, etc. You've been a fantastic guest, Rakesh. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you on so much for having me. Thanks That's so great. much. Thank Thanks. you.